The Japanese company Subaru is one of the most popular automobile manufacturers in the world. And although the company's logo is recognizable amongst almost everyone, what people might not know is that the logo, as well as the name Subaru, are designed after a star constellation. You see, Subaru means Pilatus. It also means United. And the Subaru company was five companies that came together under one name, just as the star constellation of Pilatus is six or seven stars merged together. Pilatus might more commonly be known as the Seven Sisters in the constellation of Taurus. The Seven Sisters make up the eye of the bull in this star constellation. But it's not just the Japanese that have a fascination with this star cluster. This star cluster has been a part of human history since the beginning of time. And unfortunately, due to the powers that be, a lot of the stories of this constellation and its impact on humanity have been stripped from us or have been pushed to the side as nothing but folklore. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, we do have a Patreon account if you would like to help support the channel. We are up for monetization. It's been a few weeks now. I don't know what's gonna happen. However, I would like to be able to get a new camera and get better editing software so we can make longer videos without our computers completely burning out on us. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're gonna be talking about the Palladians. I'm bringing you today was suggested to us by a viewer of a subscriber to this channel now I will not say this person's name on the on the story just in order to respect his or her privacy but if this person is watching I do thank you for this story because man oh man it got me going down a rabbit hole if you are the person who made this suggestion and you would like to take credit for this suggestion, please comment below so everybody can know it was you that gave me this idea. A few days ago, we were out walking our dog and I was running through different subjects I've been studying for videos for this channel with my boyfriend. And I mentioned to him that I had a subscriber suggest the Palladians. I asked him if he knew anything about this subject and he piped up and he said, of course, I love studying the Palladians. And when we got back home, he proceeded to go through this bookshelf behind me and he pulled out this book. This is the Palladian Agenda. Now I have not had time to read through this whole book, but according to him, this is a really good option for anybody who wants further information on the subject matter that we are gonna talk about today. So who are the Palladians? In May of 2011, a group of researchers found an aircraft that had crashed roughly about 3,500 years ago in the Botnia Gulf. Now this is a gulf between the countries of Sweden and Finland. This of course is Nordic territory just like in our videos about Vivalberg Castle. This is where the Nordic people originated. And as we've studied with the RH negative bloodline and the idea of Nordic folklore, the Nordic people didn't evolve. The Nordic people are presumably not from this planet, just like the reptilian 3,500 years ago is a very long time. Of course, this predates Christianity. It predates our modern conception of what reality even is. And as I said in the opening, the Japanese are not the only group of people that have stories regarding this soul cluster of stars 
that allegedly is home base to a group of people, a group of extraterrestrial called the Palladians. In fact, over in China during the Ming Dynasty, they spoke of the Palladians. In some of their tombs, it is said that they hold treasures about the origins of humanity through the Seven Sisters star constellation. Not only in China and Japan, we also have the Native Americans. And not just one group of Native Americans, but many Native Americans, including the Cherokee and the Navajo and the Iroquois, three tribes that we have spoken about on this channel. The Cherokee referred to the Palladians as the star seed. They believed that the Palladians gave them part of their people, part of their humanity to bring into the native cultures so that they might be a guiding light for all of us as we try to evolve in our own consciousness. Now this belief we will get to later on in this show. But first, in order to understand the belief system around the Palladian people, extraterrestrials, we have to understand the history of the Palladians within the galaxy and also within our own planet Earth. Now we've spoken about on this channel as well as on David Zublik's channel that it is now apparent the history we've been fed may not actually be our history. In fact, it seems like it's a dumbed down account of how we came to be because if we actually knew who we were and what potential we held, we could probably overtake the dark entities that rule our earth. Barbara Marciniak is a trance channeler and she channels the Palladians. I will link her YouTube down below if you wanna investigate more of her, her speeches, her channelings on your own time. Now, in order for us to understand the history of the Palladians and their role in our lives today, we have to understand their agenda. According to Barbara Marciniak, and I quote, the Palladians are a collective of multi-dimensional spirit beings from the Palladist star system. The group's mission is to assist humanity with the process of spiritual transformation. Now this star constellation is the closest constellation to the planet Earth. It is also believed that the Palladians aren't just extraterrestrial beings that we think about when we think about the Greys or the Anunnaki or Reptilian, but the Palladians actually look very human. You could walk by a Palladian on the street and not even realize that that being was a being that didn't originate on planet Earth. It is also believed by many UFO scholars that the Palladians don't just look like us, but they are our cousins. They take human form as we do, and they are concerned about the Earth's future. They, of course, have a reason to be concerned. An ongoing war between the Palladians and the reptilian race. You see, it is believed that not only are the Palladians our distant cousins, but they are the next step in our evolution as a human being. Now we know that the reptilian people, the people on planet Earth that carry the reptilian bloodline appear to have blonde and reddish hair and blue eyes. Now it's quite a wonder that the Palladians also carry piercing blue eyes and blonde hair. Again, they are considered Nordic and descendants of the Palladians, of their intermingling with the human species, also carry the same Rh negative bloodline. Now the Palladians had to leave their home planet 3,500 years ago. It seems the reptilian race had destroyed their planet, so they came here. Now when they got here, they realized that the reptilians were also trying to destroy Earth as well to destroy and to enslave humanity that was here on the earth. Now in past videos, we have referenced the Book of Enoch where the fallen, fallen angels or the Anunnaki had mated with human women to create their own children. It is believed that the Anunnaki and the reptilians created 
their own children to create a slave planet. Now the Anunnaki were coming to planet Earth to find more gold. Now it's quite peculiar that in our society our money has not been gold-backed for a while. And with the new coming of Nasara and Jasara, it appears that we will be going back to gold-backed money. Now, where has all the gold been? Well, it appears that the ruling families, the royal families, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Vatican, all these people who have made these agreements with the Anunnaki, with the reptilian people, have been hoarding all of the Earth's gold and have created a system through the Federal Reserve to keep us enslaved for their own wealth. And it appears that with the help of the Palladians, Earth is now taking its rightful inheritance back. You see, when the Pleiadians got here 35 years ago, they did find multiple hives that have been set up by the reptilians. Now, the Pleiadians went ahead and got rid of four of the hives, not realizing that there was still a hive left down in Antarctica. As of late, we realized that there is a lot going on in Antarctica that we have not been aware of. And when the Palladians finally figured out that they still had a hive down in Antarctica, the reptilian race called a truce with the Palladians. Now at this point, the Palladians did not know that the reptilians and the Anunnaki had bred people onto planet Earth to help create a slave planet. And over time, as the Palladians kept making their new home here on planet Earth, different languages were established. The languages established by the Palladians were German, French, Spanish, Polish, Hungarian, Slavic, and Italian. In fact, English is one of the European languages that originated from the earth. The rest came from the Palladians, from their star constellation. Now we've spoken a lot on this channel about the laws of creation. Regardless of whether you are following the polarity of positivity or negativity, dark light, God, Satan, there are laws that everyone has to abide by. One of these laws is the law of free will. Now, every time I study the laws of creation and I look at this concept of free will, I get Rush stuck in my head. Rush is one of my favorite bands of all time. I love their music. I feel like their music is so powerful and a lot of their music revolves around this concept of spirituality. And for any of my really young subscribers, I will put a link to that song down in the description below. So maybe some of our young subscribers can find the joy of Rush. Now the Pleiadians, of course, are inherently good. Again, they are a more evolved version of humanity. They understand the idea of love better than we do. In fact, from what I understand, the Earth itself is a pretty hard planet to live on. Not just physically, but internally. We have a lot of struggle here. This is a school for us. In fact, in Hermetic tradition, they believed that the seven stars open seekers to a higher level of consciousness. In fact, the Hermetic tradition also believed that the seven stars represented a school of learning for those who have worked through all their issues. So again, people who have moved past their own attachments, who have learned how to find compassion beyond ego. This is the place of the Palladians. Again, it is our next stop in human evolution. Not just evolution of the body, but more important, evolution of the human soul and the human consciousness. And in fact, in 1999, they found what is called the Nibra disc in Germany. And this dates back to, the, to 1600 BC. Again, regardless of what your ethnicity is, regardless of whether you're like me, you're a European, or you're a Native American, or you're from Asia, regardless, Everyone knew about the Palladians back in the day. Everyone, and when the world was so much 
bigger because we didn't have what we have now. There was no internet, but everybody knew about these Palladians. Everybody knew about the reptilians. Everyone knew. How come we don't? How come this has been stripped from us? Ironically, it's been stripped from us through free will. Because again, this is the laws of creation. The Palladians have taken a step back, and even though they live among us, they highly respect our own free will. They understand that they can't impose faith on to anybody else, that every everything that happens to us, all the work we do has to come from the inside. Even Jesus said, heaven and hell lie inside of you. It's all about you and your journey. So the Pleiadians, when they backed off, they just decided that they were going to study humanity. They were going to take time to observe us and see how we functioned within our own world. Well, the reptilians also had to abide by the laws of creation, the laws of free will. Except the reptilians being darker, more evil, demonic beings, satanic, luciferian, decided to trick and manipulate the free will of the people. We now understand this tricking and manipulation to be mind control or MK Ultra mind control. When you're able to manipulate a person's thoughts, then you're able to control a person, but also allowing them to use their own free will, even though that free will has been garnered by propaganda. And over the last 100 years or so, the reptilians have been able to gain more control over the earth, over what they view as their slaves. They have developed more hives. They've expanded. We see this now as we watch the good guys, the good powers that be, clean out all these underground tunnels. Apparently, there is a big hive down in Perth, Australia. And we do know that Melbourne, Australia, had crazy tunnels underneath it where they were trafficking humans. There apparently is also a hive in New Mexico. Well, we all know who had a place in New Mexico as well. And of course, there's another hive in Europe. Well, through all this mind control, human beings have ended up selling their souls over to the Draco, over to the reptilians. And they agree to be at the mercy of these higher entities, higher entities of the dark side. Most of our politicians have sold their soul. Most of our people in finance, our bankers, have sold their soul. And their main job is to get on television and to sell us this idea that evil is good and good is evil. The reptilians invented the system of socialism, of communism, of fascism. Because in those systems, everybody is stripped of their own autonomous free will. Within socialism, communism, and fascism, God is taken out of the equation. God is replaced with the state. And now we know that the reptilians are the state. And so all human beings under these systems of government are subjective to worshiping and working for demonic entities. Within socialism, communism, and fascism, your money isn't yours. Your land isn't yours. You work so hard and you pay taxes, high taxes, back to the state. We all know that with socialized medicine, our body isn't ours. It's not ours, it belongs to the state. So under socialized medicine, the state is allowed to do particular things to your body that you might not want done. But because humanity got manipulating into believing that socialism, communism, and fascism were good, by free will, we have elected leaders of the dark side. 
We can also see the speeding up of this over the last couple hundred years. We went, we've had so many wars, American Revolution, Civil War, World War I, World War II, and now it appears that we are in the Third World War, hopefully the final World War. You see, the Pleiadians became aware of MK Ultra Mind Control and of all these other hives that had popped up around the planet around the year 2000. Now, this was a year before 9-11, which most of us now know 9-11 was an inside job. 9-11 was done by the Luciferians. And now we are in what Native Americans refer to as the quickening. We spoke about this in a prior video, where time is sped up. This portal of time is running faster and time is running out. We are now at the 11th hour. We know that the president of the United States, the 45th president, is not a Luciferian. We now know that he is surrounded by what we call white hats or the alliance. People who have worked their way up in militaries or political areas around the world who never sold their soul to the reptilians or the devil. People that are trying to steer humanity back into a positive density. And many people believe that our current administration that is working with all these people around the world is being assisted by the Pleiadians. That since the year 2000, the Pleiadians have stepped in because they've been asked to step in by people in humanity who knew what was going on. To help guide the people back to a godly place of being, a good place of being, a positive place of being, of understanding human consciousness and pure love. No, the Pleiadians are not gods. They are just the next step in our human evolution and they are putting their hand out to help us, their cousins, step up with them and get closer to the unconditional love of God. This is not what the reptilians want. And here at these final hours, people who have yet to do their own work are now being asked to make a choice. The other day when I was walking with my boyfriend and he was telling me about his understanding of the Pleiadians, he said something very interesting. Of course, in my heart of hearts, I always worry, am I doing the right thing? Am I good? Am I helping humanity or am I hurting humanity? Well, my boyfriend said that the answer is pretty simple. In March, we were asked to lock down. The whole world went into lockdown. It went into lockdown over a virus that on March 11th of 2020 was downgraded by the World Health Organization and the CDC as nothing more than a cold. Over these past few months, we have watched as numbers have been skewed, as people who are dying of heart attacks or cancer are having their death certificates altered in order to serve a different agenda. The powers that be, like Dr. Fauci, that serve the dark agenda, have now instructed that we take away our God-given right of breathing. In the Bible, as well as other spiritual scripture, it talks about how God breathed life into man. And now we're being asked to cover that, to stop that, to take away what is ours by God. And they don't have to enforce it because they have people that are so manipulated by the propaganda of the demonic reptilian people out there harassing people who don't want to give up their God-given right to breathe. We also have people like Antifa and BLM harassing and rioting and looting and tearing down people's homes, people's businesses. And the evil of this violence is being celebrated as good by the dark side. The victims are being persecuted. And as my boyfriend said to me on our walk, that he believed that we had done enough work because when we were forced to lock down back in March, neither one of us ever for a second believed that there was a virus out there no more deadly than the common cold. It was just a knowing that this was all a scam. Not once have either of us ever feared this sickness. Not once have either of us ever believed that this was an actual plague. And over these 
past few months, we have had the privilege and the honor of watching more and more and more people in humanity wake up, see the truth for what it is, see evil for what it is, and see good for what it is. Now, I just hope and pray that people in my life who are still scared of something that's not any bigger than a cold are scared of the good and, and praising evil as good. I just hope and pray that by the time time runs out, they have already woken up because for those people, they will have to redo this life over again. The rest of us, hopefully, will be able to move on to a better world. And for those that have sold their souls to the reptilians, to the devil, well, we know what awaits them. Now in my research, I found that many people who come from a Christian background were very confused about the Pleiadians. How could this be right? I believe in the Bible. Well, it's easy. In my opinion, the Pleiadians and the reptilians prove the Bible to be true. Just because they're called Pleiadians doesn't mean they're any different from what we perceive as angels. And just because reptilians are called reptilians doesn't mean they're any different from what we call demons. In my opinion, it's all the same thing. And in my opinion, we are at the end of time. In my opinion, it is now a time for us to transition. Now, I don't believe that that transition will be the end of the earth as we know it. I just believe that we will just transition into a more positive planet. Some of us might not even notice the transition happen. And I do think that this is absolutely an epic time to be alive. And I believe that the elections that we have coming up in November will be so historical. As Charles Ward says, this is an election between good and evil. And I do believe that good will win. Historic landslide of good winning. Why do I believe this? Because God wins. At the end of the day, God wins. And again, the Palladians are not God, but they are here to help us. They are here to bring us closer to the love of God and bring us into a more positive place. All right, so what do you think? Do you think we all just came from monkeys and we're just living haphazardly on the planet? Or do you think there's some truth to the story of the Palladians? Now, I've said when we covered the Black Eyed Kids that I, I'm terrified of Black Eyed Kids. I never want to experience that. But I actually do want to experience a Palladian. If they're real, I would love to have an encounter with one. If you go online, you can find a lot of people having encounters with Palladians just standing in the grocery store, having a conversation with someone that looks very Nordic, who is obviously, there's something off. They're not totally of this planet. And I invite that. And of course, if it happens, you guys will be the first to know. All right, thank you so much for sitting through this story. Again, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Roderick for helping me edit and produce this video for you. For those who have asked, we are working something out where you can buy the full song that is our intro song here on this channel. Again, the song was written by Josh McKay. Josh McKay is of the band Deer Hunter, and we are gonna to try to get that to you guys for those who have asked. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye.